Now, verses 26 through 29. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Paul is again saying that we become sons of God, not in the sense that Jesus is the Son of God, but we become children of God. And Paul uses the term sons here because back then it was the sons who inherited, and uh, that becomes important in a few verses. And you have a hard time reading these verses, verses 26 through 29, um, and not seeing that faith and baptism are used almost as synonyms here, right? He starts out and he said, you are all sons of God through faith, for all of you were baptized into Christ or clothed with Christ. So it seems almost as if faith and baptism, Paul kind of uses them as synonyms. Some people say that a person comes to Christ through faith, and then they are baptized as an act of obedience later. But Paul clearly says that faith and baptism are the way into Christ. Uh, you have other people say that the Bible teaches two baptisms, that there is a baptism of the Spirit and there is water baptism. But in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, Paul says that there is just one baptism. So water baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit or having the infilling of the Holy Spirit must be simultaneous. Clark Pinnock, in his commentary on Galatians, says this, Baptism and faith were the inside and outside of the same thing. The New Testament writers associate, associate union with Christ, forgiveness of sins, the gift of the Spirit, and many other rich truths with baptism. It is not a magic rite that automatically conveys all these things, but it is an occasion when a person really encounters Jesus Christ. Baptism marks the transition from death and condemnation to a new life of peace with God and membership in the body of Christ. Baptism does not save us. Jesus is the Savior. Okay? But the Bible teaches that baptism is the time and place when God promises to do certain things. And one of those things is we become clothed, he says here, or covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So Paul has been making the point that Judaism does not contribute to salvation at all. So he now says that no one has a special advantage or disadvantage when it comes to Christ. We are all one in Christ. That's why he says here, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. We are, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay, so men don't have a spiritual advantage over women. Women don't have a spiritual advantage over men. Okay, Jews, the only advantage they had was they had a little more background to know that they were sinners with the law. Okay, but that didn't help really in making more of them come to Christ as opposed to Gentiles. So he says there's no neither difference between Jew or Gentile, uh, slave or free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. So he says we are all one in Christ. And if you are in Christ, since Christ is the seed of Abraham, that makes us offsprings of Abraham. Okay? Therefore, he says, we are heirs of the promise. We are heirs of the promise. We are not heirs by adopting Judaism. We are heirs through Christ. 